We thank God for our general overseer, Apostle C. A. Coward. Thank God for the presiding bishop, Bishop Ali McLeod. We do appreciate our board of bishops, the overseer of the New North District, our district that we are presently in, overseer Kevin Williams. Amen. We thank God. Hallelujah, Father, District Elder, District Elder Andrew Johnson, all of the pastors that make up our district, Pastor Nixon Phillipson, Pastor Gavin McCullough, Pastor Daniel Fields, Pastor Kevin Kitchen, Amen, Pastor Timothy Van Beaver, and all of the ministers that have sent out. Amen, we thank God for each and every one of them. Amen. You all may be seated. It's good that we don't have to just praise God on one certain set of Saturday. Sometimes people only praise God on Sunday, Sunday and hmm? those that observe the Sabbath, they praise God only on the Sabbath, Saturday. Amen. But we we praise God every day. Amen. It don't matter what day it is. We ought to give God praise because David said something very profound. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Every time that I have, every opportunity I ever have. I would praise God. So good to see Brother Michael again with us. What is your name? Is it Audrey? Audrey, thank God for you as well. Amen. Coming to be, I think uh, he visited this Sunday and he's back again on a Wednesday night. Amen. God is good. Amen. Tonight, I would like to talk and I'm going to do a series on demonology. And I want you to understand, we're going to deal with every spirit, foul spirits, evil spirits, wicked spirits, all the types of devils and the categories that they're in. I'll be covering all of these over the next few Bible studies and over the next Sunday night services we will deal with demonology. Amen. Now, there is a spirit world that people that are not spiritual don't understand. People have spirits, and we use the word demons, but the word demon isn't found in the Bible, and the word in the Bible that called devils, plural. The word demon comes from the word daemon, D-A-I-M-O-N, in the Greek term that's relative to evil spirits. So the English word demon comes from that. Amen. The word demon. Amen. And today I would like to deal with it because a lot of times people don't understand uh, the realm. And people try to, I say this, people medicate demons. When demons are possessed, or people are possessed with demons, what happens is People look at them a certain type of way and tell them to go to the hospital and they prescribe them with medication, they diagnose them with schizophrenia, bipolar, all these different. Those are not, there's no scientific method that you can put a term on a demon. I'm gonna say for the Bible now, there's no such thing that people are saying, they say, oh, this, this person is schizophrenic. Uh, this person got this type of disorder but those are disorders, it's what's working in them that causes that because the doctor don't understand the spirit realm. He say, okay, that's bipolar disorder. If you one person Monday and you somebody else on Tuesday, that's not bipolar. Something working in there. Let me show you from the Bible. Go to Matthew, uh, go to Mark first. A lot of behaviors that people have and I tell you this, because people ask the question, and this question is asked a lot of times after I teach on messages like this. People will say, "Well, Pastor, do you think I have a demon? Do you think I have a demon?" Let me tell you something. If you have a demon, you know you got a demon. Everybody mentioned in the Bible that had a demon or was possessed with a devil, they came to God because they knew what was in them. 
And then say, Lord, is there something in me that you see that came? This devil tormented me. This, this, this person in the graveyard, cutting this, all these different abnormal activity that an individual does is signs that something's spiritually wrong, not mentally. And the world, what the world does is they give mental diagnosis to spiritual things. They'll tell you, they say, oh, no, that's just, you know, followers like that, and they're going through a traumatic this. And so when you go through trauma, it traumatizes you, and it calls you every now and again, you look around and just scream out. That ain't no trauma, that's a demon. That's not, when you, when you, if you look in your car, and every 30 minutes, you know, you see somebody, just, ah! Yell out, or you just cussing, or you yell and screaming for no reason. That's not a medical condition. The world has labeled it medical because they don't understand the spirit rhythm. Amen. When things like that happened to Jesus, when Jesus walked and when the disciples walked, they didn't say, go see the doctor. They didn't say, let's go see what doctor such and such say. He said, come on out of there. Loose me. I'm going to teach you every term. When people say loose, when people say I bind you, all these different things, a lot of people say those things and don't know what it means. And that's why people not get results. You say, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Devil, you ain't got no power. I bind you. When you say you bind, binding is an action. So me saying I bind you doesn't mean that you're bound. If I tell you what you cannot do, that's binding. Yeah, let me say it, let me, let me say it this way. So if, say, Vincent, you're in my house and you're doing something I don't want you to do. And I say, hey, stop doing that. You're bound from doing what you wanted to do. That's how you bind demons. You don't bind them by saying, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Y'all ain't saying that. Bind you. I bind, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I bind you in the name of Jesus. That, that, that ain't doing nothing. That devil just laughing at you. <laughs> Amen. Let me show you this. Go to Mark chapter 5 and start at verse number 1. And then we're going to go to the the types of demons and all those different things. Because I want to cover this so we can understand it. And I was talking to the apostle because I've been dealing with, uh, you know, being delivered from me and uh, all of these different titles that I was dealing with. So I believe that in this hour right now, we need to understand because some of people, it's not you, it's something in you that's causing you to respond a certain way. Now you got to understand now, you have people that have demons Demons influence, demons possess, but then you have the devil that can speak to you. Just because the devil is speaking to you don't mean you have a demon. And when the devil calls you to do stuff and possess you and you out there, and every demon, let me tell you this, every demon is not the ones falling out the mouth and falling on the floor like a snake. You got intellectual demons. You got intelligent demons. The ones that see, the devil, when he's in you, he don't want nobody to know that he's there so he can have a place to reside in. So he don't, normally the devil don't really cut up unless the atmosphere is set for the cut up. Somebody, I remember one time when we had a, a family came and they started coming and they was working and they was ready to do things in the church. And uh, one of the young kids, one of the young boys, he said, every time I go inside the church, and, you know, the, while the pastor is preaching, there's something in me telling me to yell out, I hate God. And the mama didn't know what to do. She, she thought it was something wrong with the church. Ain't nothing wrong with the church. But then when, that's, when, the, when the environment is conducive and that demon start cutting up, it make you want to lash out. If something inside of you telling you to yell out, I hate God, that ain't, that's, not a, you know, that's not a personality disorder. Let me give you the scriptures first, and then we're going to go a little further. Read, huh? And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Uh huh. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. Now the man met him. Jesus didn't go looking for him. He came to him. Watch this. Read, uh huh. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with shame. All right, so the Bible says this man, you know, the tomb is this man is, is out there in the graveside, running around in the graveyard, and nobody can catch him because, yes, you got a question? Right. 
So like 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 if if I bind you, that means you you you're you're bound to do it something. I'm I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. Alright? So this man is running around in the tombs. Now, if you see somebody out there in the graveyard right now today, people that are not spiritual. And you see somebody running around out there, climbing on stuff, looking around, taking their clothes off, doing all that type of stuff. What you gonna say? People that's not spiritual. You gonna say something wrong? He'll be crazy. We need to take him to Georgia Regional because they got they need to diagnose him with, with, with something, something in his mind. So we get him some medicine. Amen. Can I tell you something? There's no medication that can deliver a person from a demon. <laughs> can I tell you what the, the medicine do? You know what I'm saying? It suppresses it, suppresses. but can I tell you something? The devil don't want you to take the medicine. Mm. Because what it does is, it don't allow them to act out. Mm. You know, it, it keeps you calm, so now it's suppressed, and then people say, well, that person looked like, and they're doing better now, they're on that medicine. But then the devil will tell them, stop taking that medicine, so he can cut up a little bit. Mm. Amen. All right? Watch this read, uh-huh. Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, uh -huh. neither could any man change him. So he said when they even put chains on him, he was breaking through the chain. Mm -hmm. And this is why, you know, when people are possessed with demons, it looks like they got a strip that they never had. You see somebody uh, 50 pounds pushing people as three, four hundred pounds. Because they have that that supernatural strength now. Because it's not natural anymore. Now they have an internal spirit that has a little power. I says, the Bible said that they were chaining him, but he was breaking chains. Nobody, he said, nobody can hold him down. Read, huh? And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tomb, crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, he's crying out in the tombs, yelling. Screaming, acting up, and cutting himself. A person naturally would not harm themselves. That's right. If you see a car coming your way, you're going you to move. But if there's something dwelling in you, you say, stand right out there. Go out a little further. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Right? When you got something, y'all talking to me here. So if, if, if it's you as a, a person and you have your right mind, you're not willing to cut yourself. You're not willing to kill yourself. So when you have these thoughts or when now, now let me, let me explain this now. If you are in a position to where you try to kill yourself, right? That can be demonic uh, possession. Now, if, the, if you heard somebody say something in your ear or talk to you to tell you to kill yourself, that don't necessarily mean that you're possessed with a devil. Because the devil told Jesus to jump off the earth. He told him to commit suicide. Yeah. Let me show you that in the Bible. Leave your finger there. Uh, matter of fact, uh, it might be the... Uh, go to Matthew chapter 4. All right. Matthew 4 and 1. Uh -huh, read. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. Uh -huh. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh them up into the holy city, and set them on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest so he took him to the top of the pinnacle of the temple and told him to jump off. That's a sign of committed suicide. Right. So if the devil talked to you, now the devil, it's been plenty of time. You know the little orange cones out there to be on the road? I've been driving, and I can hear the devil talking about, go ahead and just knock a few of them over. <laughs> I said, no, you knock them over. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, you do. <laughs> the devil will tell you, tell you to do certain things. And, you know, so the devil can talk to you. It's the difference between him talking to you and then you being persuaded by what he said. 
Because if you do what he said, then you have to be possessed by him because now your actions and behaviors are now being controlled. It's a difference between somebody being controlled by something or someone giving you, I guess, advice to do something. I need you to go, go ahead and jump off that bridge. No, devil, I'm coming to you. No, devil, you jump off the bridge. Now, if you, if you say, jump, jump off the bridge, you, oh yeah, I got to jump off the bridge. Now, you're possessed and the devil is within you and causing you to do this. See, the devil needs a place to live right now. Because he can't speak, he can't do anything without a house. Everybody in here is a house. And either you, you, you we're a house, see, see, God has to speak through us in the earthly realm as well. So he needs a house to live in. The Bible, that's why the, the, the body is a temple. Yes. Our, everybody in here is a house. So we got to figure out what's in the house that you have. Oh, figure out what's living in that house. And I'm going to show you Bible for it that it shows that everybody in here is a house. Yes, question. So at what point is, um, like, what's the difference between being, like, I guess, demonic possession and just, you know, falling out of the person and judging them? What's the difference between, so, you know, being demonic possession? What's like, what are you referring to? So, like, how we differentiate somebody who's falling into, like, demonic possession type of stuff? Uh-huh. Well, well, de demons do cause people to backslide. Oh no! If a person go, if a person leave God and go back into the world and go back and do the, the worldly thing, they're gonna have some demonic possession because you're not gonna be in the world and not do things of the world. So, and those things are spiritually driven. Just like if a person say, "I'm going back to the," you know, you go back to the world, and start listening to worldly music. Worldly music got spirits attached to it. So now you go out there, you can easily, well, I'm ready to go on back to church. Well, you need to be on the altar so you get some of that unclean spirit out of you. Because that music, once you, I'm telling you, once you leave out from God, you go back into the world, oh, you're going to have spirits because you're going to start doing stuff that you ain't supposed to do. And you're going, your portal's going to be wide open. You're going to be back watching stuff you weren't supposed to be watching. You're back in, uh, sexually involved. As you to, because being sexually involved with somebody, you can get demons that way too. Because your sexual parts are portals, just like your eyes. I didn't say nothing. Yeah. So then you wonder why you went down, laid with this certain person. Now you up, and you act just like this person. You start cutting up like this person. You're doing all these different things like that person because it's a spiritual engagement now. So if a person leaves God and go back into the world, oh yeah, they they go they, they go have spirit. Remember, but the Bible talks about. If you get one spirit, you get rid of one spirit, and you go back into what you used to do, you're going to have seven more spirits after that spirit get back in. Oh, I'm in the book. All right, go back to Mark, Mark chapter 5, and then I'm going to get to you, uh, Dana, because you, you, what you're asking is, is going to be the uh, in depth of what I'm teaching and dealing with some of the steps and the certain spirits. So I'm going to get to you. All right? Yes. Uh, it's, it's like uh, things to hold somebody bound. Like, let's you know you got cuffs and chains, but it's like something that just to kind of keep you bound, keep you held down. Yeah. All right? Bree, uh-huh. But when he saw Jesus afar off, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, uh -huh. and cried with a loud voice, and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thy son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Uh -huh. And he asked him, What is thy name? So now, these, this is involved, and I'm going to go through steps about that. I may not get to it tonight because it's going to be a series. Once I start dealing with it, showing you and teaching you all the types of spirits and where those spirits come from, and I'll show you how and what to say to those specific spirits. Because some spirits, you're going to lay hands. If you lay hands on a spirit that's active, it's say, you know, unclean spirits of the heart. There. Then it talks about spirits that's in the belly. That's why sometimes you see people lay hands on people's stomach. See they lay hands on the chest. Then people lay hands on people's minds because the devil have that control over their mind. So it's different. Now, when I'm going to get to that, I want to give every stage so you can understand it. Amen? All right. 
So he said, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Uh-huh. And he asked him, what is thy name? He asked him, what's his name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Now, if we see something like that, and, 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 let me explain something to you as well. Legion is not a devil name, or it's not a, a spirit. The, a legion is not a spirit. Legion just means many, just like, um, what's that? Oh, where my quarters at? Somebody got my quarters. I got quarters. Got a quarters. All right. Find the scripture that says uh, God was going to call down legion, a legion of angels. Because legion doesn't necessarily mean that it's a devil. He was just, he was just saying, I say how many. Now, when, when you look at legion, legion is a, uh, a military term. And that, that term means many, or it's a lot of us, and it's organized. Yes. Absolutely. It's a Roman. Absolutely. It comes from a Roman. It's a, it's a Roman soldiers. It's about three to 6,000 organized soldiers is where the word legion comes from. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. All right? Now, let me show you this. You got it? What is it? Go to Matthew 26 and 53. So legion, you know, when somebody say, you know, legion, and, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that person or the devil that's in them is called legion. Legion just means many, a lot. All right? We there? Yes, sir. Read, uh-huh. Thank is thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Ah, 12 legions of angels. Now, they're talking about an angelic host to be on Jesus' side. So the word legion doesn't necessarily mean demonic. And that, that's something that we need to understand because some people believe that, you know, you hear legion. If somebody uses the word legion, then that means, oh, no, that's, that's a devil. That just means many. It just, it's, a, it's a numeric term. All right? Y'all follow me? All right. Now, go back to Matthew uh, 5, uh, Mark 5. And this is another thing that, you know. All right, where you at? All right, read. Uh -huh. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. All right. So there are steps, and I'm not going to go into it. And, and, you know, when you deal with certain spirits or demons, you want to find out what you're dealing with. And you can't walk up to nobody and say, oh, you got a demon. Let me cast you out. They're going to look at you like, man, you, you make it up my face. Want to see a demon? I'm going to show you one. <laughs> right? So demons, in order, and I'm not going to deal with casting them out tonight, but in order to cast them out, there has to be a manifestation. You can't walk up to somebody and say, oh, oh the devil in you. I'm going to go ahead and say, man, you don't get off me. Just think about it. Somebody come up to you, lay hands on you, and yell in your ear, telling you to come out and loose here and bind this and all that stuff. How would you feel? You'd be ready to fight. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I mean, right now, if, if right now, nobody, there's no manifestation here right now. Somebody walk up to you and lay hands on you, talking about, come on out of here. Get out of there, you devil. And all that stuff like that. You, if you get off me. Right? So then, when you, you know, so when, when that, that stuff starts manifesting, now watch what he say here. Uh huh, read. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. So, so we, we see now that they wanted to go to another place. Can I tell you something? There are demons everywhere you go. They waited, all the stuff that you've been delivered from, they right there with you. They waited for you to slip up so they could climb on back in them. Let me give you a uh, scripture for this. Cool. See if you can find my concordance. I, I need concordance. That made me want to offer some I need. Alright? Now, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, I'm sorry.
And can I tell you something? A lot of people, a lot of people have demons. They just too embarrassed to get them out. Oh, it got quiet that fast. <laughs> They don't, want, they don't want people to know that they got a demon. So they, they, they love it when you try to, you know, hold it out and say, you know, I better not try to go because I know I got problems. I know something be in me and telling me to do it, trying to make me do this. And I know I got all these people I love. And you don't want to be embarrassed. So you don't want you don't want to get delivered. So you don't let that thing manifest. You try to keep it quiet. And you start twitching and stuff. You try to go out and go to the bathroom like something, you know, because you don't want it to come out. Because you don't want to be embarrassed because you done had a demon and you're in church. Ooh get tight, get tight for a little bit. <laughs> I was ready for it. All right. All right. Watch this. Uh, First Corinthians five. Uh, Second Corinthians five and one. Uh -huh. Read. For we know. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle. For our, if our what? Earthly house. Earthly house. Uh huh. Of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God. And house not made with hands. We have the building of God. So what, what happened was this, and I, and I want to go to, uh, read a little bit more of that, and then we're going to go to uh, the 15th chapter. Uh, read a little bit more of that. Eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we should not be found naked. For if we that are in this tabernacle, do grown, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. All right, let me explain this to you. Everybody in here, when you look in the mirror, that's not who you are. That's the house that you live in. So when I look in the mirror and I brush my hair, brush my teeth, you know, all this stuff like that, look in the mirror, dress, my, dress myself up, this is this 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 skin. This is not the real you. Oh, no, okay, you know. um, uh, so the real you is within you. Anybody got a cell phone? I got a cell phone. All right. So you see the cell phone. The phone itself is the house. Right? It's not the phone. Right. So then within this phone, you have a battery and you have a SIM card. Got a problem with it? The battery is the life of the phone. Just like God's spirit, thank you. Yes, sir, that's the one I need right there. Just like God's spirit is the life of us. Remember, in the beginning when God created man, he blew into man, had dirt, so he had a shell. But inside that body was a spirit. God's spirit, which is the battery. Then inside this phone, there's something left in here. What's the other thing? SIM, SIM card. card. Yeah, the battery is what we just discovered. <laughs> uh, so the battery, the battery is alive, but the SIM card is the actual phone itself because it holds all of the data. So it's not my body that holds the data, but it's my soul. So the soul is who you are. Let me give you a Bible for that. Go down into Genesis. Where I got you at right now? All right, go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. All right, Genesis 2 and uh, what's that, 6? But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God from man of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. All right, so God blew into man, and man became a what? A living soul. So man is not this body that we see, but man is the soul that's within the body. Y'all follow me? And, you know, does that soul look like you? It does. But it's not physically you. Can I give you a Bible for that? All right, let's go to Luke chapter, uh, what's that, 18 or 16? Where the preacher's at? 16. All right. Luke chapter 16 and verse number 19. Read, huh? There was a certain rich man 
which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crown which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. Uh -huh. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good thing. So and you'll see that they recognize each other even after they die because their soul actually looked like them. Y'all follow me? So the soul of a man looks like what you look like in the mirror, but what you look at in the mirror really ain't you. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. So, yeah, so the soul is what you really are, and what I'm looking at in the mirror is just the body that houses my soul. And so my soul actually looks like what I see in the mirror, but it's not actually me. Amen. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah? All right. Now, let's go back to what I had that first Corinthians 15. Second Corinthians. All right. First Corinthians 15. And verse. Start at number 38. Uh huh. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. Uh -huh. And to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are celestial bodies. All right, so the Bible talks about celestial bodies. Y'all see that? Anybody know what a celestial body is? All right. You say spiritual or heavenly body. All right. Y'all got that? All right. And then you have terrestrial, which is what? Earthly. All right, we got that? So what, what happened with is, is that angels used to ascend and descend to the earth. They would go up into the heavenlies, and then they would come back into the earth realm. Y'all follow me? So even while, but the, when they went back to the heavenlies, they had to put on a body, and when they came to the earth, they had to put on the body. All right? Now, let me ask you a question. I know that NASA said that they've been to the moon, right? Now, we don't know. I, don't, I wasn't there. I don't know. But they said they went, right? Can you go into Earth's atmosphere without another body on you? You can't leave, you can't leave Earth and go out to space or even Earth's atmosphere because you'll start to lose oxygen. Is that right? Is that right, Joel? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to make sure my scientific biology people. <laughs> All right. So when we go out into that atmosphere, we start to lose oxygen. So they have to put on an astronaut outfit, which is very, I don't say it's not, it's not identical, but it makes sense to go to uh, uh, put on another body or put on something in order to go up there. And we come back down here, you got your regular body. So when the angels will come down, they put on terrestrial bodies. Let me give you a Bible for that. Go down there to Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Alright. Alright. Genesis 19. And verse number 1. 
And there came two angels. And there came two angels. To Sodom and Eden. To Sodom and Eden, huh? And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. Uh -huh. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Uh -huh. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, could pass the house round, round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Uh -huh. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came? Where are the what? The men. Men. So when they came down, the angels came to earth, they came in the body. Because the people that was in the city recognized them as what? Men. Y'all see that? So when they came down, they had a body. And when they went back up, they had a body. But there was some, there was some stuff going on. So Jesus had to start, you know, some of the angels, you know, started uh, backsliding. They were doing something they weren't supposed to do. Amen. So those angels became demons. So angels that backslid or left their uh, first estate. So you had demons that just didn't want to be angels no more. They wanted to get on down here and, 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 and meddle, meddle and do, do things that they wasn't supposed to do. Watch this. Go to Genesis chapter 6. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. All right. Genesis 6 and 1. Watch this. Uh-huh. And it came to pass. Came to pass. When men began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them. Uh -huh. That the sons of God. The sons of who? Of God. Sons of God. Saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, watch this. The Bible says that you had sons of who? Of God. All right, let's pay attention to the language. All right? Sons of God. Is that what it says? And then it says daughters of who? Now, there has to be a difference between sons of God and daughters of men. Why would he make that difference? Because the sons of God, when they came down in the earthly realm as angels, they became men. And when they came down as men, they came down as sons of God. I'll give you another one. Go, leave your finger there and go to Job. This Bible study, isn't it? Okay, I want to make sure I'm in the right place. <laughs> All right? Now, Job is one of, they, they, they've uh, studied and they believe Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible. Amen. All right, now read this. Job 1 and verse number 6. Uh -huh. Now there was a day when the sons of God when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them and Satan came also among them see at one point of time Satan was he really considered the son of God but when he got on the other side now this is why he down there with the sons of men or the sons of God down there at the time while they're presenting themselves you have Satan coming along as well. Right. Amen. You got all of the angels coming down because the sons of God was considered angels and Satan himself was an angel as well. Yeah. Can we get Bible for that? Yeah. All right, let's go to Isaiah. I hope y'all write these down. There's a good, oh, I had a question over there. It's all right. Isaiah 14 and 12, I believe it is. Uh -huh. Right. Right, in the, in the flesh of the body. Yes. I mean, you really can see it both ways, really, because if you see a demon manifest in somebody's body, I mean, you can, you know, see, you'll be able to see them, but I understand what you're saying. Yes. All right. Now, where I got you at? 
Is that right? 14, is that 14, 12? Is that the right one or is it 13? It's 14. How art thou fallen? Yes, 14, all right? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Uh -huh. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did its weak in the nation? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And how he going to exalt his throne unless he was in the heavenly place? Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28, yes. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I, I was going to touch it, but that's a little, little heavier. But yes, that's right. All right? <laughs> right, got you at? Ezekiel 28, uh-huh. And 12, uh-huh. Son of man, take up a limitation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Uh -huh. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh -huh. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Uh -huh. Thou art the anointed cherub. Thou art the anointed what? Cherub. Cherub. What's a cherub? Angel. So we see that Satan was an angel as well. Y'all follow me? So we have the, the sons of God and the daughters of men. And so you'll see that these angels came from their spiritual bodies when they came to the earth. They got an earthly body. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, go back to... Uh, Go to the book of Genesis 3, just to show you. And this is how, when we looked at Mark, you see that those demons requested to go inside of the animal bodies because they were already familiar with them. And even, I don't want to go too deep, but we, even as we look at Cain's, yes, sir. Cain's wife, yes, sir. she was considered a beast too. So demons, they like possession of bodies, especially... Possession of bodies that don't have no direction so they can possess them. This is why you can't really, uh, uh, a devil can't really possess somebody that got the Holy Ghost. Because I already got direction. I already know where I'm going. I have, I have the will of God. I'm doing the will of God so a demon can't possess me and make me do his will. Y'all ain't saying that. And if the devil possessing you and doing your, you, let me tell you something. Let me say this. And then, uh, you know, it is what it is. If you got a demon, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because if there's light there, then darkness can't be there. Ooh, Lord, can I talk? Can I tell you something? This building is dark. It just got lights in there. And because the lights are here, it illuminates it. So now it looks like it's, it's a lit building. But the building is actually dark without the lights. So if, 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 if Jesus is the light of the world and he's in us, we can't have no darkness in us. And you got the Holy Ghost on Monday and a demon on Tuesday and the Holy Ghost on Wednesday and a demon on Thursday. My brother, you won't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Because it, 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 let me tell you something. Demons, it, it ain't no back and forth game. You ain't going to be possessed with a demon on Monday and then on Tuesday you got the Holy Ghost and then on Wednesday you demon possessed again and then on Thursday you got the Holy Ghost and it don't, it don't operate like that because once you got the Holy Ghost when the devil start talking to you, you know how to talk back. Amen. 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 Yes. I've seen that. That's the same thing with that's because religious spirit is just people that just knows the flow of things. And some people that have been in church their entire life. You have people that's like 60 years old. They just understand when it's time to stand up they, and they clap. And then when it's time to say preach faster, they know when to do it. When they, it's, just, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a genuine. It's more mechani uh, 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 mechanicalized or robotic. When somebody just does these things and it's not out of a pure heart, then that's a religious spirit. If you say a preach pastor because everybody else saying it, are you saying, oh, what did they say? Preach, right. Oh, preach pastor. Yeah. Say 
That's a religious. That's a religious spirit. If somebody, if you, if you see, uh, oh, they lift their hands. That's how they lift their hands. Okay, so every time, when, that's a religious spirit, and that's what people. Now, that's not somebody coming into the church learning. That's not the same thing. Are you talking about somebody that's been in the church all these years and they, they're just, you know, trying to get the flow of things and trying to understand it, not by a spiritual thing, but by a, a mental thing. When you in it by your mind and not by spirit, then it becomes religious. So now I'm operating by m- mental thoughts or, oh, that's how they, and then people learn, learn, when you learn how to speak in tongues, oh, yeah, that's, that's a demon. Come on. Say a little pastor, say Jesus a little pastor. Oh, you say la 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 la. That ain't the Holy Ghost. You just yeah, you have learned when you learn how to speak in tongues. That's not the Spirit of God. This is why we don't teach you how to speak in tongues. Y'all ain't saying that. Because the Bible said, "Never." Y'all got me on this now. Go to First Corinthians real quick. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. I don't want to go here, but I guess since we're here, I'm going to. Thank God for it. Corinthians fourteen. We gotta understand what a, you know when you have religious spirit. Some people just know how to go with the flow of things, and people learn. They learn how to speak in tongues, and then they be sounding like this person and sound like that person. How they said that? Ta 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 ra ra ra. Ta 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 ra ra ra. Ta 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 ra ra ra. Y'all ain't saying that. What do you say? Ramen noodles. They say say ramen noodles real fast. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. Ramen. See, I gotta hear it again so I can be able to. Then you, then you sound like this person, you sound like that person. You ain't got no, it ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will speak through you, and it ain't, it is not like you. And mimicking somebody. Oh, Lord. Jesus. It get tight now. Y'all ain't saying that. <laughs> Tongue is not nothing that, that's learned. Once it's given to you, you can't control what you're saying. When you start controlling what you're saying, then now you're speaking a known language that the Bible says he that's speaking in an unknown language. So if it's a known language and you've been rehearsing it, then we got to question it now. We got to figure out this thing real or if it's just rehearsed. If your tongue is rehearsed, now I'm sorry, my friend, you ain't got it. And you might be careful because demons know how to speak in tongues too. Lord, have mercy. Can I tell you something? They, they know how to speak to better than you. Because they've been in that heavenly place. They spoke a heavenly language. Amen. And most people, I'm going to tell you this, and I'm just saying it, but sometimes when you listen to the wrong type of music, and that music can influence, and you have a demon, and a polyon demon know how to speak in tongues. Just think about the music realm. When people are singing, and it's not against people that know how to sing, but think about runs. It's like different words or different things that said in runs. It's not finished sentences. You'd be like, ra la la ba You know, y'all ain't saying nothing. So it'll have all of these, all, all of these different types of terms. So, so you gotta be very, very careful. A lot of people that, you know, in this age group now, that, you know, in this society now, music. Them demons is driven hard through music. And then people start speaking it, you know, speaking it, whatever they're speaking it. But let's get to the Bible. All right. First Corinthians, what I said, 14 and 1. Read, uh-huh. Follow after charity. Follow after charity. And desire spiritual gifts. Desire spiritual gifts. But rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. He that speaketh in what kind of tongue? An unknown tongue. Unknown. Unknown tongue means you ain't find it. If you speak in the tongues like somebody else, that means you found them. You return them to sender, ain't it? <laughs> somebody spoke in tongues and you heard it, say, oh, I gotta say it like that. Copy and paste tongues. Amen. Alright, let's go back. Um, I'm going to deal with somebody asking the question, is hurt a demon or a spirit? And you can get a spirit from her. 
You get a spirit from her, but we're not gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about every demon, every spirit. It's gonna be a series, so y'all gonna, y'all gonna, it's gonna be a good one. So y'all just make sure y'all sure here Wednesday nights and, and on Sunday night services. When I'm gonna deal with it, I'm gonna deal with every type of demon in the world. They got demons in Africa that people don't even know about. We ain't gonna talk about that tonight. We're gonna deal. <laughs> we're gonna deal with. We're gonna deal with. We're gonna give the beginning stages, then we're gonna go all the way through it. Cause I want you to understand that rim. So you won't get psyched out. Some people are psyched out because they don't understand the river. Some people are in the river, don't know that they're in the river because they don't understand the river. I mean, just caught up in it and don't understand it. Oh, why? Okay, I know this is going on wrong, but why am I saying this in my mind? Or why am I doing these things? Why am I behaving like this? Why, why am I, you know, doing certain things like this? And you got to understand that spirit realm. Yes. Huh? Well, a spiritual, a spiritual person has a spiritual ear, and you know the Bible said, uh, um, uh, uh, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So when a person has a spiritual ear, you can detect whether a tongue is real or not. And, and then you got some people that just think they're so spiritual to where if it don't sound like their tongue, they're like, ah, ah, yeah, I don't think they got it. They said they got the Holy Ghost. I don't know. I don't think they, it sound a little funny to me on that last part. When they first said it, it sounded like they had it when it first came out. But then they, but you got to have a spiritual ear. Because some, some tongues, when you're in a spirit rip, I'm going to tell you this. Because I've listened before. And the Lord tuned my ears real good. And so I listened, and I remember someone was speaking in tongues one time. On the altar. And when they got up, I said, I, I, I said, uh, the Lord said that you'll get it for real if you stop listening to this certain type of music. And I didn't even know, I didn't even know the person from Canada Bay. And somebody confirmed and said, hey, Pastor Porter, you was right on it because there's such and such, he been, they, he, they, they've been dealing with this type of music and it's like it got a hold on them. So you'll be able to hear, if your ear is tuned, you better hear it, because what I heard was, I, it, it didn't even sound like tongues, it sounded like demons talking out. It was a, it was a weird it was a weird sound. It was, you know, it was, it was just real. I don't know. Anyway, but when you're in the spirit, when you're when you're in the spirit and you understand the spirit, you'll be able to see and identify what's real and what's not. And that's going to be a part of my lesson. I'm going to teach on that as well, uh, Josh. I'm going to deal with that as well. All right. Uh, Luke chapter eight. Oh, where I got you at? I'm sorry. First Corinthians fourteen. Yeah, we're done with that. But where I had you at before that? Genesis three. Go to Genesis three. All right. Thank you. It's good. This Bible says we're going to take notes, Anna. Yes. All right. And sometimes people ain't, they can't get it because they, 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 ain't take, they ain't taking the notes to figure out about it. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says you take your notepad out, pull your pins out. We thank God. We got guests here got the notepads out and got the pins out. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> when you study the Bible, you can't. Let me tell you something. Old man told me this. He said, a dull pencil is better than a, than a sharp mind. Understand that? A dull pencil is better than a sharp mind. Because some people think that they can remember everything. You can't remember everything. That's why, y'all see me got this up here. I, I know a lot of scriptures, but you see this right here? This means that I, I forget a lot of times where they at. <laughs> I forget. I forget where they be at, so I got to pull out a, a, a word or, you know, something like that so I can remember. Amen. All right? Now, where I got you at? Luke 8. Oh, I'm sorry, Genesis 3. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jess. You're going to make sure I get that. <laughs> All right? Genesis 3 and 1. Uh-huh. Read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. All right, so let me explain something to you. The reason why Satan chose the serpent because he got familiar with his ways. He got familiar with the behaviors of a snake. So when you have certain behaviors and certain ways you act, it gives the devil room to use you in certain aspects. So because the, the, the serpent is subtle, serpents is clever. Amen, y'all follow me? So this is why he was able to embody and a lot of people say that, well, that, you know, the serpent in Genesis 3 is talking about a behavior. No, it's not talking about no behavior. This is a literal snake. 
Tell his enemy. Amen. This is a literal state that's embodied as Satan. Yeah. Now, it's pretty, it's pretty clear in our vision. You got a question? All right. It's pretty clear and obvious that during this time when they were in the garden, you know, they were in, we all know that the garden of Eden was a spiritual place. And so we know that they, people had to be acquainted with snakes during that time. And we know that the Bible is right now because the Bible said, it talks about how, you know, we're going to, it's going to be in between, between the seed of a snake and the seed of a man. I don't know about you, but I don't play with snakes. I'm, that's not my thing. If I see a boa constrictor, I'm being constricted this way. I'll be out. <laughs> if, I, if I see a python, whatever, I'm not, you know, and you got some people that like snakes, but the majority of the population of people is not with snakes. You'll go see them at the zoo and all that stuff like that, but put a, uh, 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 what's the big anaconda around your neck or something like that, you, you know, you bucking, huh? But, hey, <laughs> you ain't gonna see too many people with snakes around their neck. Right? Read, uh huh. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, uh -huh. You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the servant said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God don't know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be of God, knowing good and evil. All right, so we'll see now that Satan actually, literally got inside of the body of a snake. And in order for spirits to be able to talk or communicate, they have to get inside of a body. They need a house to be active. Go to uh, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, 26. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, that led him out of the city, a certain man which had devils a long time. Yeah, devils. You see that word, devils? Is that singular or plural? Plural. Devils. So that's, you know, in essence, what we say, demons, same, same, you know, in the same context, huh? And wear no clothes, neither abode in any house. So he said, that there is a devil... That'll make you, the people that's outside running around, taking all their clothes off outside and building in the street and stuff like that. That's not normal behavior. But somebody tells them that they need to go to a psych, go to a psych ward, but it's a demon. The Bible talks about people that will strip themselves, take their clothes off, and go out in the middle of the road and just run around. That's a flat out demon. I had to go to, I went to Florida uh, uh, some months ago last year. There was a young man that was there. He was a promoter. Uh, uh, parties and that music got in him so bad he decided to leave his house with just his uh, uh, you know uh, his bottom underclothes on, ran in about two and a half miles and ran to the church went inside the church stood in the pulpit took his clothes uh, everything left off and just started jumping up and down the pulpit Normal, if normal, but you know, if, if, if a person is doing something like that, we look at that as abnormal. Amen. So when, when, when he did that, it was pretty clear that there was a demonic possession. Amen. Just remember, remember where, when, uh, prime example, uh, what is that, Exodus, uh, when the children of Israel started stripping. It was in a strip club when they made the golden calf. <laughs> All right, where's that at, Mike? Is that 20? Uh, all right. Go to, go to 26. They created themselves a new God. Those so was in there stripping. Right. 
They had Egypt's first strip club. What to say now? <laughs> All right, Exodus 32 and verse number 20. Start at 20, huh? Uh, start at 19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came not unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and brake them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto to thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on this ship. Uh -huh. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what he is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this cat. And when Moses saw the people were naked. Saw the people was naked. They were dancing in front of the gold calf, making their own music, and started taking their clothes off. So you know that they were driven spiritually. You start tapping into different gods and, you know, and, and some people don't even think that witchcraft and stuff like that real. All that stuff real. Yeah. Dealing with demons and, you know, trying to create all of these different realms. Anybody ever been high before? I ain't never been high. I think I, I, think I drank before. I've been high before. All right. Yeah, it's all right. Y'all can test it. It's all right. Listen, we overcome by the word of our testimony. Listen, everybody in this, you didn't come to this church saved. No, oh, no. Amen. <laughs> Nobody in this church walked in here and didn't have no limit. Ain't nothing like you ain't like you ain't never did that before you came to church. Oh, oh, in the church. Well, I came out the womb speaking and telling you a liar. Well. You done been to the club, you done been smoking, drinking, sexing, all that stuff, man. Everything under the sun, everything under the sun, you done did it. You ain't got to act like you've been so saved. Amen. All right. When you get high, you are, in fact, entering into a spirit realm. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And this is why some of you, when you got high, you know, you started, you know, uh -oh. you start seeing, you know, one of my relatives, I'm not going to tell you who, That's all right. one of my relatives said that they, they got high one time and couldn't walk and start seeing stuff. What you say? Uh -huh. Said they lost the whole half of their body. <laughs> come in, <laughs> come in, my name. come in, the neighbor. <laughs> hey, it was on something so strong, y'all don't let me fall, don't be up. Go that way. They ain't so strong. They lay walk. Huh? This how they walk. Walk. <laughs> this how they were walking around. They were so high they couldn't. They were, they were walking across the street. <laughs> what kind of stuff that was? Boy, that, they call it night. They call it gas. That is the premium gas we got out there now. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all done been high before. Don't act like you ain't been there. You done been high before and you see and stuff. You know, somebody told me they had uh, one of my re another relatives said they, they would mess with something called angel dust, man. And they said it was stuff. They said, man, they saw uh, cockroaches crawling on their arm and that there. They started hitting on stuff. Now I said, man, just close your eyes, man. You don't want to see them. They're closing. So they were seeing stuff. They just everywhere. I said, man, I'm there. People that have been on drugs scrape, scratch their skin because they saw things. And what that was is they tapped into a spirit realm illegally. And so sometimes when you tap into spirit realms illegally, it causes demonic presences. It causes demons to come in your life and introduce yourself to them. Right? Because 
Most drugs are injected through a portal most times. And then they even say, and I never, you know, experienced this, but people say that you got, you know, like like secondhand smoke, you get high up what's it called? High up a contact. Is that right? Anybody ever high up a contact before? Yes, sir. So that's real? I don't know. Hot about I only been, you know, people say you get high off of drinking alcohol. So if that's the case, I guess I've been high before drinking alcohol. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember I was trying to drink some alcohol, man, and I was in there, I went to the restaurant, man. I was, <laughs> I was like, this road, man, what's going on? <laughs> Amen. It's all right to testify because that's you don't know there's going to be somebody that's dealing with what you dealt with. You got to come out of what you was at. Come on down. And some people be so ashamed of what they done did and all that. Listen, the Bible said, uh, except a man be what? Born again. So it don't matter what you did before, you're born again. So anybody can talk about what you did, talk about what I'm doing now. That's why people be so scared to tell their testimony. People be afraid to tell their testimony. I don't, I don't want nobody to know that I used to smoke weed like every day. I don't want nobody to know. I ain't saying nothing. All right, so people are tapped into a spirit realm illegally, right? Read, uh-huh. All right, go back to, uh, I'm sorry, go back to uh, Luke chapter 8. And I'm trying to get y'all out of here because this is going to be a long, this is going to be a good series here. Luke chapter 8. And 26, uh huh. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils a long time. And devils wear, a long time, uh huh. And wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tomb. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Because many devils were entered into me, into him. All right, now that's the same that's the same uh, example. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes nine because there it is. Demons that you know. Everybody should know that when you dream, you're in a spirit realm. When you're dreaming, it's not a it's not a natural realm. And I'm just gonna be honest with you tonight. If, you know, you said an angel come in your dream and, you know, as your, as your auntie or whoever like that, that's, that's Satan playing in your mind. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and, if, you know, some people say, you know, you know, you know, my mama visited me and, you know, my uncle visited me and with my sleep, in my sleep and he had wings and all that stuff like that. Let me tell you something. Let me be honest with you. Because it's a spirit realm. Satan knows how to deal in the spirit realm. Yes. If your uncle died, he's not coming back to your dream. Yes. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yes. Your, your uncle, if your uncle died, he don't know nothing that's going on now. Uh -huh. All right, let me give you some Bible. Yes, question. with you further down the road. He understands what's going to happen with you futuristically. So he could come in a dream, and the devil could come in a dream and talk about he and your uncle somebody and start prophesying to you, saying stuff that happened and all that stuff like that. But you got to remember, if it happened, you know. So if it's in your mind, it already happened, so the devil know that you know, so he can come in your dream, ask something that happened already, and say, well, you, you know, this happened yesterday. Yeah, we, we both know that because 
The devil was there yesterday. I was there. God was there. So you can't tell me something that happened yesterday. You follow what I'm saying? So the devil's going to try to operate in that sense. He can't get in your mind and tell you what happened to you last year. as no profit in your dream. And say, oh, you know, this is your uncle, you know, Uncle Kenny. I want to let you know I saw last night what happened. He didn't see that. The devil saw it. And Satan is portraying to be this person. Yes. Question. Have a good one, Yes. Oh, no, that's a demon. Yeah, you addicted to drinking blood. That's a flat out demon. That ain't even. Hey, we didn't have to. We would have to question that. You drinking blood. That's a straight demon. You may have a few up in there. You drink the blood. Yeah, that's a whole. Yeah, that's just watching uh, vampires in Brooklyn or something. Yes. Uh, like a, a, a spiritual person or? Well, only way you can tap it, the only way you could tap into the spiritual realm illegally is by the way of drugs or by um, seances and all that witchcraft and stuff like that. People tap into the spirit realm illegally, just like the palm reader. The palm reader, she tapping into the spirit realm illegally. She ain't supposed to be doing that. Although she may be accurate, that's a straight, straight Satan and the demons operate within her. All right? I'm going to deal with that. I'm, that's going to be a topic. So we're going to talk about a person that, if, if it's a person or if, if it's the demon, by the characteristics of a person's behavior. Because sometimes people will say, well, that's just her. That's how she acts. If her behavior is not normal, that's not her. That's just been a demon that's been there for a long time. You see the Bible said that he had devils for a long time. Sometimes a person can have a demon for so long that that becomes them. You know what I'm saying? So a person, and then this is like, this just like, you know, uh, 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 we'll say, all right, just like this, for example. You have people that get possessed and want to do mass shootings and killings. It's people like that start off at a young age playing games all right. and become gamers, and it becomes a part of them. So then, you know, dad buy him a gun, and he outside shooting at the, at the, at the whatever. And then, okay, I'm target practicing with faces and stuff like that. So now, you know, that demon has possessed me. And now people say, oh, that's just him. He just like to shoot. He just like to hunt people. No, then you can't hunt people. That's a demon. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to deal with that. That's going to be another topic. Knowing a person and knowing a demon. Yes. Huh? Well, uh, intelligent demon. Meaning that that demon knows, you know, they're they not really foaming out the mouth and stuff like that. They just kind of go with the ropes. And then when they want to, you know, cut somebody out or cut up and do crazy stuff like that. That's the, it's like, it just kind of come out and then, you know, with the time necessary or whatever, they just shoot out and then come back. Or a person that could, if, if, if somebody is talking, say for instance, and I, I would never do this, David, I'm talking about uh, Apostle Kyle in a negative way. That's a demon talking out of me. It's an intellectual, intelligent demon because I'm not falling out the mouth, I'm falling out. Doesn't mean that that's not a demon. If I start talking about my leader in a negative way, that's a devil talking out of me. The Bible talks about that. All right? So the, 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 the intelligent demons, they don't, they're just the ones that's not falling on the floor and squirming like a worm and all that stuff like that. They just, you know, they know how to be reserved and know how to talk. And, you know, but people have that spirit of God, and they just, you know, stuff like that. So that's those intelligent demons. They're just not all falling out and doing all that stuff like that. All right? Got me? All right. Now, read, uh-huh. Where I got you at? Oh, all right. Nah, I'm about to get y'all out of here. I know the hands y'all in a little bit. Y'all just bear me about 10 more, all right? Nine and five. Y'all got work tomorrow? Oh, yeah, the city, the world, the resume. Okay, let me get y'all out of here. I was about to be in here for another couple of hours. <laughs> yes, question. I was looking, yeah, yeah, it can be, yeah, it can be. A, a religious spirit can be intelligent because they know the flow of things, they know what to do. I remember one time, um, I was in a service and uh, a young lady, every few minutes, she'd go like this, or something like that. And I, I had touched my best friend. I, I said, man, what is that? 
So he, he, he said, man, that's flat out, whatever. And I said, man, that's a religious spirit because, you know, it was, it was weird. So, but yeah, you can, yeah, yes. And that's the spirit of a rebel. And I want to deal with that. Because people just have rebellious behaviors. And if you're always rebellious, that's a, that's a spirit. That's not, that's not, I'm just, you know, every now and again, I just want to be rebellious. And that's why you got to be careful what you name. It. You know, basketball team author, they call them rebels. No, the word, you know, rebellion, the root word of rebellion is rebel. So that, that rebellious spirit, so somebody always disobedient and you, you, you know, you're teaching them to do this and they just continue this rebellious and rebelling against you, that's a spirit. Yes, absolutely. And we're going to go over these, we're going to go over all these spirits. Y'all going to be amazed by all these demons and spirits that's in this world today. Amen. All right. Read, uh-huh. For the living know that they shall die. Uh-huh. But the dead know not anything. Y'all see that? The living know what? That they shall die. The living know that. So as she said, that I'm alive, I know I'm going to die. But when I die, uh huh? But the dead? But the dead know not anything. The dead don't know nothing. So, you know, uh, if you say that I had a vision and my, you know, auntie came to me, that wasn't your aunt. If you say your grandma came to you, that wasn't your grandma. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. So, so that's, that's, that's saying that. Uh, uh, you know, that's that's the enemy or Satan dwelling in that room. Amen. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Now, when the rapture take place, the Bible talks about the saints meeting him in the air and our souls will enter into our celestial body. I'm going to tell you this. Since the creation, since man was created, it wasn't meant for man, for man to die. Man was supposed to live forever. And the only way man could live forever in that body that God gave him, it had to be a celestial body. So the body that Adam and Eve uh, had was considered a celestial body because in essence, that's what we were supposed to live in forever. Y'all follow me? All right. So when the rapture takes place, we, our souls are going to enter into our glorified bodies, which is the celestial body. Y'all follow me? All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, and verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, with God, will God bring with them. All right, so the one sleeping in Jesus, God going to bring a with him. Uh-huh. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh -huh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now check this out. The Bible says that the dead in Christ will arise, but he said the ones that sleeping in him will be coming with him. So what does that mean? So the ones that are dead, they're going to meet their body in the air just like we're going to meet our body in the air. Y'all follow me? So he said that the, die, the dead in Christ will rise, but then he also said the ones that sleeping in him. The ones that sleeping in him is the ones that's dead in him. So the Bible talks about those bodies coming together. So what meaning is the soul is going to connect with that celestial body. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, go down there to the book of uh, Matthew 15. And I'm going to talk about this and we're going to close. Outside demons, they lost their bodies 
So now they're trying to find ones to dwell in so that they can be heard. Can you imagine being in a room and you're yelling and screaming and talking and nobody can hear what you're saying? That's what devils are doing right now. Every fallen angel, every demon right now is walking around, screaming, yelling, trying to say things, but nobody can hear nothing they say. So they're mad. So because they're mad, they try to find anybody slipping so they can get inside of them. Yes, sir. So this is why the devil entices. This is why the enemy do certain things to catch contact with your portals. So the, the demons that's out there. Now demons, you know, they're not idiots. Demons are not idiots. Demons are actually organized. The Bible talks about them having a prince, having a king. So they're, they're, the demons, they, they're organized. Yes, sir. They're not just all, you know, willy-nilly, falling out, whatever like that. They're organized. Yes. Say that again. Why does he come after us? Well, because we follow it after Christ, and you know, this is Christ want everybody to be saved. Satan want everybody to be damned. So he want everybody in damnation, as God want everybody to be saved. So he's gonna attack the ones that striving for God. This is why you know it's very important that we endure to the end, because Satan is his job to you know try to fight you and combat you and do all these different things. Uh, I'll be honest with you, if the devil ain't fighting you, then you might need to find out what side you on. If you don't have any fights, if, if Satan, if Satan's not fighting you, come to, if, if Satan is not fighting you or doing something to you to aggravate you, you might need to check and see what team you want. Because according to my scripture, the, uh, what's that first Peter chapter five? I'm coming to you, Josh. Be so intimate. Let me see what the Bible says about that. All right, first Peter chapter five and eight. Watch this. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking. Who Wait a minute. Is. He walking around doing what? Seeking. Seeking. Yes. Ah. So he ain't looking. He's seeking. He waiting to be. He trying to see if somebody gonna slip up. So he said, "Man, hey, y'all, y'all, watch. Listen, listen. Uh, hey, 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 devil's number three. Devil number five. Devil number six. Devil number seven." Devil number 18. I know you haven't been out in a while. I want y'all to gather around. I want you to go over here and attack this person. They're organized and they're seeking. They're not just looking around. They're not, they ain't taking no breaks. No breaks. See, can I tell you something? In the spirit realm, there's no time. So they don't have time in the spirit realm. So they're attacking at all times because they don't have time. So I wish I had a few. That's good. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? You go to sleep. Have you ever slept for 10 or 15 minutes and had like a three hour dream? Yes. <laughs> you took that 20 nap, that 20 minute nap before work, and you woke up like you thought you was late, and you right on time because it seemed like the dream was just so long. Have a whole day. And because there's no time in the spirit realm. And so, because there's no time in the spirit realm, Satan has all the time that he wants to try to fight. The people of God. So the Bible said that they seek him who be made to bow. Y'all see that? I'm coming to you, Josh, huh? That was that was it. During that time, that's it. They're not, there, there ain't nobody coming. There's no angels that's coming down as they did in Genesis 6. And the ones that's left their state, they're not doing that. That was that time. Now all of the, the angels that already fell. Now the next the next set of ones that you know uh uh we, we will see in uh, Revelation when they're coming down. Now they're angels. The angels that are already fallen and the demons that are on the earth, all of those are here already. Only time they're going to make any, you know, lateral movements or anything like that is when uh, the rapture takes place and they have their rapture. When Satan gets kicked out of the heavenlies and he comes down to the earth and then the demons that are in, under the earth, that the Bible talks about the ones that are in chain, they're going to be raptured up. So you got the two raptures there. All right? Yes. Uh, you answer. Okay. All right. Now. All right. Where I got you at now? All right, go back to, uh, what was we at, Matthew? All right, Matthew 15, I'm trying to hurry up, y'all. 
Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Uh, the Bible talks about a third. Yeah, it talks about a third. All right? Now, 15 and 15, uh huh? Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draw? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. All right, pay attention to these. Uh huh. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. So the Bible talks about unclean spirits that's within a man, and these are things that you born with. You don't have to you don't have to get a demon to be sexually involved with somebody. That's not a demon. That's your flesh, which is congruent to the unclean spirits of the arm. You want to commit fornication or adultery. This is not these are not demons that have entered inside of you. Demons ain't gonna tell you to go have sex. That's not a that's not a that's not a demon. That's you. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. Well y'all get real quiet over now. Demon don't say, oh man, she look good and all that stuff. That that ain't no demon. That's you. Can I tell you something? I don't care how long you've been saved, and when you get the Holy Ghost, or when you come into it, and you get the Holy Ghost, women don't stop looking nice once you get the Holy Ghost, or brothers don't stop, or men don't stop looking nice when you get the Holy Ghost. Come on, sir. The Holy Ghost don't blind you. Y'all No, I wish I had the right church to be tonight. Holy Ghost don't blind you. Amen. Women still gonna look good until the women, the brothers still gonna look good. So it don't it don't matter. It, it doesn't matter like you get the Holy Ghost act like you know, oh, I done got the Holy Ghost and you know, change my you know, change my thought process of how a woman look. No, it, it ain't that don't they don't change. It ain't gonna change your eyes. You know what I'm saying? If anything, you'll be able to see clearly. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. All right? Now, where I got you at? All right. All right. Go to Galatians real quick. And y'all give me three more scripts and I promise I'll let y'all go. Galatians. All right. Galatians chapter five. Now those unclean spirits of the heart that the Bible spoke about is very congruent to the flesh activity. Now, the way you get rid of the unclean spirits of the heart is by resistance. Y'all follow me? So if I don't get in her bed, then this won't happen. If I don't go to the bar, the bottle won't get in my hand. Y'all follow me? So the way the unclean spirits of the heart, if I'm not always in mess, I don't want to try to kill nobody. I don't want to hit, hate on nobody. I don't want to murder anybody if I'm not in mess. Y'all follow me? So a lot of the unclean spirits that's within you, the way you get rid of those is not by laying hands and come out and all the different things. That's by resistance. The Bible says you resist the devil, he'll do what? So you got to resist these, these, these spirits. Now watch this, read 519, huh? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelry, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. That they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So those things are the works of what? Yes. Is that the works of Satan? Yes. It's the works of the flesh. Alright? Now, go back to Mark chapter 7. I'm coming to you. Right. 
Now, even, I want to tell you something. With this, you know, I know, I know some people would, would ask the question about witchcraft and why, why would witchcraft be a part of the works of the flesh? But when you look up that word witchcraft, it goes hand in hand with drugs. When you're doing drugs, it puts you in a, you know, a spirit realm falsely, which is a form of witchcraft. That follows it? All right. Yeah, somebody had a hand up. Right, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so they're saying that they're, they're hand to hand. And so those are the ones that you resist. All right? Where I got you at now? All right, Mark 7 14. I promise I'm about to get out of your way. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. All right, so you'll see that those are those spirits that were uh, within. All right, now, uh, go to Matthew 12 and 43. And then I'm going to close it here. Matthew 12 and 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Now, the Bible says that the unclean spirit is gone out of a man. He walked in dry places, seeking rest, and find none. So this is why, you know, them demons, when they seek in the body, they get real tired. And this is why when you deal with certain demons, they try to lay out and act like they sleep. They want to let no wake up, let's get them, <laughs> get, them, get them all out of there. A lot of demons I ever work with, a lot of them, they try to fall out and go to sleep. It's because they've been seeking in different places so that they can lay out. Now, and a good way to keep keep that devil out because it's dwelling in dry places, you keep them out having the Holy Ghost. And we know that the Holy Ghost is congruent to water. Amen. So if there's water, living water on the inside of you, then the devil ain't got no business in it anyway. Y'all follow me? All right. Now, read, uh huh. Then he said, I will return into my house. Listen at the devil. He said, I'm going to turn where? Into my house. The devil take ownership over a person. He said, that, that ain't your house, that's my house. He said, I'm going to go back into my house. Think about that. That's how when people are possessed, the devil thinks that it's his. That's why he don't want to leave. And sometimes you need to know and, and, and don't be comfortable with the devil being in you. Oh. Who Lord? Some people are not themselves. They don't allow, you know, different type of spirits to enter into, into them because they wasn't confident in the person that they are. So now people take on, you know, joker personalities, uh, uh, all type of, you know, demonic people on television take on their personality because they want to come with themselves. And so the devil, he just possesses you and say, that's my body, that's my house. Oh, that person. When you get to that place and you know it, it's time to hit the altar hall, all right? Read, uh-huh. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Uh-huh. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. So now, when, when you allow Satan to come back into your body, once you got delivered, this was somebody asked a question about going into the world and coming back. Remember? So that's the same thing. You go back out doing the same old stuff that you used to do, that devil that got cast out of you, he's going to bring eight more devils, I mean, seven more devils with him, and the Bible said that they're going to be worse than the one that you had. So before, when you flipping tables, punching wall, holes in walls, choking people, and acting crazy, doing all that stuff like that, and that 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 thing got cast out of you, when it get when it come back, it's gonna be worse than that. Yes. Well, backsliding. Well, you can. Uh, and that's, you know, 
I don't want to, for, uh, per se, validate a mental backslidden person because you do have people that are in the church and their mind is outside of the church. And see, in return, if, if that's the case, then that person, that mind will lead them exactly where it had them. They're not strong enough. So some people do it. We want to say backslide mentally. We want to say that. We'll just say that they, their mind goes back to the world where they want it to be or things that they want to do. Now, if people go through that stage. That doesn't necessarily mean that they got to be. But people start thinking about, man, you know, when I used to go to that party, man, we had so much fun and stuff like that. That doesn't necessarily mean you got a demon or that you backslid it in your mind. You follow what I'm saying? So a person that, now, if you go, if you leave the church and go back doing things that you did before you came in the church, oh, when you come back, you need, you need to be the first person on the altar. First person crying out because you're going to have so many, I'm telling you, it's going to be devils because... Because here's the thing, the one that you had before you came, you got seven more of those identical spirits that are worse. So if you was, if you were smoking weed before, when you get that new one, he's gonna turn the weed around and put the smoke in your mouth and, and flip it around and do something crazy. Then you put the, the weed in your ear. You know what I'm saying? The, that was gonna be worse than weed. Amen. So they were trying a different stuff. Because that one demon, and, and what happens is, I give you a proper example. I think, and I don't know the levels, but if a person smokes weed, right, and I got delivered from weed, right, if I go back to the world because I got delivered, that regular high will do me no good. And they say nothing. So if I go back and get that same regular weed that I had before, it ain't going to do me no justice, so I have to upgrade from what I was at. So now, if I upgrade to a different, what do they call A different grade, thank you. You go to a different grade, that's going to accumulate a different type of spirit. So now you got to upgrade a demon. First you had an 87 demon, now you're down there at, at 93. Yes. He said what? Oh, no. Uh, that ain't, no, that ain't no guy. I tell you that they got to go to uh, go to Jews real quick. I, I'm, not, I'm just gonna read over this. We're gonna read this real quickly. But when the Bible talks about going in the way of Cain, it describes all the things that Cain did and what he was engaged into. So when when Cain you know, brought his offering to God, he brought roots up. Watch this. I want you to see this. Jude 1 and verse number 10. Uh-huh, read. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. Uh-huh. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, and those things they corrupt themselves. Uh-huh. Woe well, unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. They have gone in the way of Cain. Now see what the way of Cain is, huh? And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in his gainsaying of poor. For these are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Uh -huh. Clouds they are without. All right, clouds they are without water. That's smoke. Uh huh. Read. Carried about of wind. Uh huh. Trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead. Up by the now you can't tell me that ain't weed. Mm. Show him. What does that say? Read that again. <laughs> read, read that again. <laughs> Talk about them trees, for them. <laughs> and they call the trees. Don't you call the trees today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now watch it. I'm going to tell you how it is. It's, it's, it's the same thing because when you read further, they'll show you what you do. Watch this read, huh? These are sponsoring your feast of charity uh -huh. when they feast with you. Feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Clouds without water, that's smoke. Read, huh? Carried about the wind. Trees whose fruit wither. There it is. Trees with fruit that will do what? Wither it. Wither it. Uh huh. Without fruit. Without fruit. So we're talking about a tree. Twice, have no dead, uh -huh. twice dead. Twice dead. Twice dead. Plucked up by the root. 
plucked up from the what? The root. Now, watch this, watch this stuff the trees do to you. Read, uh-huh. Raging waves of the sea. Raging waves of the sea, meaning that you're imbalanced. Yes. Foaming out their own shame. Foaming out your mouth. Some people smoke weed, they thought foaming, uh-huh. Wandering stars. Wandering stars, meaning that your mind is now wandering, meaning that you're high. Come on, sir. Lord, is that what your Bible? Yes, Say wandering stars. Let's talk about a mind that's wandering. Uh huh. To whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Who reserved the blackness of darkness forever? So if you want to enter into that room, God said He'll put you in that room forever. You'll be in a dark place forever. So weed is not for the place today. Weed ain't. This is weed been going on for years. It's to enter into the spirit realm illegally, and the Bible talks about it. Yes. Oh, no, yeah, no. If a person want to get rid of their demons, the first thing they got to do, the Bible talks about dividing the house. Mm -hmm. So if, if that house is divided, it can't stand. So when if that person if that, that person used to do certain things, you say, no, I don't do that no more. You start standing up to the devil within yourself and telling them, no, you're a liar. I'm not about to kill myself. Oh, no, that's suicide demon. No, I'm not with it no more. You used to tell me that, that I need to go pop pills. I ain't popping another pill. When you start standing up against the devil, then you already know, it's time to come on out. Oh. And so that's the first thing you got to do, and, and I'm going to teach on this. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I'm, I'm going to teach on how you, you know, how, how to operate with it. All right? Any other questions? Yes. Uh, so you don't have to like, um, how we like, Terry, it's like, if you want to separate yourself from that spirit, you don't have to actually like, um, like, you don't need nobody to you. If you really want it to come out, you can do it by yourself. Like, can you carry by yourself? Well, you, you, you can get certain unclean spirits out by yourself. Those are the ones through resistance. But the demons, the, the other demons, those got to be cast out. You got to get the ones that, that came in there because they're not going to willingly leave out. I need some assistance. You're going to have to help me get this thing out of me. Right? So, you know, uh, 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 if a person has, you know, a demon within them and not so much as an ugly spirit as far as, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, fornication or something like that, yeah, something like that, you know, that stuff, and you can do that on your own. Now, demons that, that came in there, and they, they, they talk about that's their house, they're not leaving. You ain't, they, they, the only way you're going to leave, you can start to buy the house and somebody got cast out of you. Because there's no, there, there no, devil, no devil in the Bible willingly left a person. You got to get them on out of there. And somebody had to tell them, somebody had to give him an eviction notice. Yes. You done made your lease agreement. He in there. He, he done reside there for a long time. And I pray that the mortgage, but he done gave <laughs> <laughs> Again, again, death, the devil, a lease agreement, and now he's in you, he's leasing the inside of you, and then when you say it's time to go, you gotta get that eviction over. So, so you have to, somebody gotta cast it out. Somebody gotta cast it out. Alright? Any other questions? Yes. Alright? Didn't borrow somebody glasses. Alright? When does hurt and unforgiveness turn to demons? And can having trust issues cause you to have a demon? I'm going to deal with these. I'm going to deal with all of the demons and what causes demons to enter. So that's going to be, a, that's a good question. I'm going to keep it. We're going to deal with it. Because I, I want to go over it all together. I don't want to just kind of in and out, in and out. I want to make sure we cover it. So anybody got any questions about what I've discussed today, dealing with demonology, uh, the study of demons, we know where it came from and different things like that. Any other questions with that? All right. Everybody good? All right. I know y'all want me to deal with hurt and who hurt and, and, and trust issues, all that stuff like that. That's going to take a little longer. That's why I'm going to wait. Yes. So I have a question. Like, people that be like schizophrenic and stuff, that's a demon? Oh, that's a flat out demon. Yeah. Straight up demon. And you start tripping and, you know, saying all type of stuff and incoherent things. And, you know, that's a straight up demon. Start barking at people and meowing and then crying out like a cow and all type of stuff. Okay. Straight up demons, all right? Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. All right? Any other questions? All right, everyone stand and give the Lord a hand. Praise tonight.